Hey guys, Chris Mario here, back with another video, and in this video today we're going to be inking Izuku Midoriya, well, Samurai Izuku Midoriya, <laughs> real time. And uh, this is a sketch that I did for one of my redesign videos that I did recently on the channel within the past month, and uh, I liked how it turned out, so I wanted to do a real time ink of it. And I was thinking about doing a time lapse of it, but uh, a lot of you guys wanted to see me do this in real time, and I thought it'd be fun since I've never really done a real time ink on this channel. But, and especially since the new season is going on right now, which by the way, I'm only, I'm like two or three episodes behind. Um, I've already read the manga up to this point, so I, I know what goes on, or else I'd probably be a little bit more enthusiastic to watch the episodes <laughs> but it's still really cool um right now i'm just kind of waiting for the funimation dub that's really what i'm holding out for the simul dub or whatever it's called but yeah in any case um as for what I'm using to ink this with, as you can tell, I am inking it digitally, but honestly, it really doesn't feel very digital because I'm using the iPad Pro 12.9 inch 2017 model, I believe. It's the second gen iPad Pro, and I'm using Clip Studio to ink it. And uh, this is pretty much my favorite, what you're seeing right now is my favorite setup. This is what I love to ink with. Um, I like I like traditional inks too, but uh, this is really what I like and what I'm used to because I've inked so much manga on this. It's crazy. I'm also actually inking something else right now that I'm not really planning on doing a video for, but I guess I'll show it to you guys. Um, it's one of the sketches I did on here. It's a uh, Zeldris versus Meliodas. So I'm inking this one. That's going to be posted to my Instagram. Instagram. But yeah, I thought this would be fun to do. A lot of you guys went to see it. Some real time inking. And, uh, you know, I don't talk a whole lot about the iPad Pro on this channel. I used to, but. Um, for those of you who are looking to get into digital art, which if any of you are ser serious about art, you're eventually going to have to get into it, um, cause digital, there, there's just no professional industry that has to do with anime and stuff where digital isn't a thing. Um, there can be a debate about that with manga, but, uh, most new creators do their stuff digitally it's faster and cheaper and stuff like that but that's a debate for another day oh don't want to zoom in too far I actually have a big habit of zooming in and out really fast and I try to do that much less during recordings that I need to speed up or else it looks like some sort of strobe and I'm gonna give someone a stroke if I do that but yeah <laughs> um I know a bunch of you are gonna ask what pen is that what pen is that um it's the G pen on clip studio and basically I just if you look up really closely it's really jagged because I turned off um the anti-aliasing over here if you look at this little guy this is all of my stats and stuff but this is the anti-aliasing I turned it all the way off and um, if you go to the little little icon right here next to the brush size um, these are all my settings over there but yes this is my ink brush setting honestly it's not really that much different than using the normal brush is just a little bit more jagged and um, gives a bit more of a traditional feel. But it's not that much different because I inked with uh, a different um, pen when I was drawing manga for a long time and then I finally settled on this one. Um, 
it just really matters how you use it. It you I could do this with a lot of other pens too, so. I just like to stress the fact that it's not the tool, it's the creator. Cause I like to always think about um when I'm doing something, I think about if Takashi Obata or Kishimoto or Horikoshi had this piece of paper and just a pencil, that's all it is, what would they be able to create with this? You know? And uh, when you put in that perspective, it kind of humbles you a little bit in looking at your tools and thinking your tools are what would make it better, but it's really, really is not. And I know some of you may know this, but some of you may not. Um, yeah, thought I might mention that. Because I remember also back when I first got an iPad Pro, even though I knew this <laughs> already, uh, like the whole thing I just talked about, I was like, man, it's going to be so much easier. Yeah, no, I still had the same old problems I had before. So I had to learn how to fix those problems. But, uh, yeah, talk a little bit about some of these design series. I'm, I'm thinking about going into some original designs that will still be based off of series and stuff like that, but more so it will be based off of uh, an original character I'll create for something. And I have some new videos that I want to try doing. I also got some other video content that is coming that I haven't done for a while, manga related, so hopefully you guys are excited for that. Um, a lot of you I have quite a few comments that say, you should make your own manga. Well, I mean, I actually am doing my own manga. I just don't really talk about it on my YouTube channel very much. Um, but uh, that's going to be a video coming up. I'm going to be doing one of my manga pages. Uh, a lot of that stuff's actually on my Patreon. I post the updates of what's going on with that series there and like page updates and all that good stuff on there. Um, one good thing about digital, and you could even do this traditionally, I don't even have to worry about leaving this spot because I could just erase it. Um, but yeah, like, honestly, digital, especially when you have the iPad Pro, it feels so much less digital. I mean, it's still digital, but I don't do anything differently except for having a little bit more leeway. I don't do anything differently than I would have done if I was doing this traditionally. Maybe just points I, I'm inking something, being a little bit more calm uh, you know, while I'm inking, because I know I can fix a mistake. There's nothing wrong with knowing you can fix a mistake, but you should also try to get it on the first try as well. Hmm, feel like I'm starting to warm up a little bit here. Um, I want to flip this, see if it's any good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's doing all right. Many times I've scanned in traditional illustrations and found out that uh, uh, there's a lot of things wrong with the illustration and uh, a lot of mistakes that I had to sketch in and fix digitally in order to be able to ink it. And it's just some things that you don't really pick up at first, but um, glad I did actually go to ink them because it brought some things to my attention that I needed to work on in my own art. And as for just little inking tips, I don't, I don't know, just, you, you have to ink a lot and uh, look at, you know, your favorite artist and um, you'll slowly get better. Inking is really just line control. You have to know how to be able to make it thick and thin at any point in time you want. And uh, typically my lines are thick to thin, if you look at most of them, or a straight line. And if you can see, there's a lot of variance here that I can get, but 
I'm purposely keeping it at a specific width with how much pressure I'm applying. And that same thing can go for a G pen. So basically I'm just trying to replicate the G pen that I like traditionally. That was my whole plan to begin with because I don't want my tools to be too different from traditional to digital. I want it to all be kind of cohesive so all the skills translate back and forth. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't know if we're going to be able to ink this whole thing, but we're going to be able to ink quite a bit of it, actually. I actually forgot what's going on here. I don't even know what's going on, like what that is that I'm drawing right there. Um, <laughs> help me, help me. <laughs> Maybe I should have had the traditional illustration nearby, which I do not have it nearby. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who might be wondering why I might be using uh, blue line work, I didn't always actually use blue line work um, when doing, actually I almost never used blue line work, but what I found was, um, I actually thought it was a weird thing that people did, I was like, why would they even do that? But what I found was I could turn it down less, um, I could have more of the line work showing um, while being able to ink, because you can differentiate your black ink from the bluish tint much, much easier. So it becomes this really easy thing to distinguish between the two and your mind can kind of separate it. Mm -mm. I could have used a ruler for these, but when I could even go straighter than this, but it's, it's, it's hard. But when I'm at my peak ink game, when I'm like inking a lot of pages for a chapter, um, my lines can typically get pretty dang straight, but that's what happens when you don't <laughs> do things for a certain amount of time. You start losing a little bit of, uh, a little bit of the accuracy and you gotta rework it again. Um, yeah, let's go up like that and let's do a hatching here. So as you can tell, this is going to be the first time I actually turned it. I don't know if I actually even have to turn it just slightly. And you can see that the hatch lines are pretty evenly spaced and that's just, you know, me practicing it so much over and over and over and over again. You can practice lines like that on your own, just doing it over and over and over again um, to get accuracy and be able to do that type of stuff. Uh, but um, the way, hmm, let's pull that in tighter. The way I ended up learning was when I did so many manga chapters, what I did was I kept up my favorite artists either on uh, my computer screen or I would have their manga open in front of me and I would always be glancing over to it and my mind would slowly start picking up differences between the two mine and theirs and I eventually started getting the hang of certain things but that was pretty much how I learned mm -mm -mm -mm. I might have to change that nostril. I don't know. We'll see as I go. Probably will. I should try to do this more zoomed out. One, you can see everything better and you can tell if your white line width is doing good. Two, it helps it feel a little bit more traditional because of all that, because you can see everything all together and you're doing it just, you know, 
as you see it and you're doing it based off of everything else around it. Sorry, I got a little focus there. You know, quiet. Then I'll say that and then get quiet again. <laughs> hmm. uh, what are we doing? This one. Can't tell what's what on this. What is what? Hmm. You just do it like that? I don't know. Can't exactly tell where my original lines were here. I'm thinking they're just like this. I feel like that bottom part is getting a little stiff. Maybe I zoom out here. Yeah, that looks that looks good enough to me. Maybe throw an extra strand in right there. No, that looks weird. <laughs> let's, let's pull it in tighter. There we go. Um hmm. Maybe we should get into doing the blacks and the hair and just go. <laughs> this is another thing I love about uh, digital inking is being able to fill it in so easily. When you're a manga artist, this is extremely important. <laughs> being able to fill in these uh, lines. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll do it on the same layer. Or not. Let's uh let's go to a different layer just in case I want to change it. So I'm gonna grab some of this stuff. The first digital thing I've done on here. It's not related to a traditional technique. Alright. Cut. Oh. Oh, I already went to that. Okay. Cut, paste. Okay, now go up here. Turn that off. Alright. So basically what I'm trying to do is just have my blacks on a different layer. I don't always do this. Uh, especially in, in uh, manga pages. I don't do that. I'm just doing it specifically for this. Try to get some hatching, cut off this side. Um, do that, maybe do this. I don't know. I might change some of this. Um when I actually put in the blacks, but we'll see, we'll see. I don't know why I zoomed in so far. See, it's it's actually a habit of mine to zoom in so far when I don't actually have to. Something I need to get rid of. Oh. I don't know, we're already at 19 minutes into the ink. Alright, time to speed it up a little bit, Kuzo. Alright. Mm, that might be a little weird, being too similar to the other one. Why not even have that one there? I don't know, we'll find out as we move along with the ink. Hmm. I'm trying to create a little highlight right here. Ok, 
should have just hatched it out because that's what I probably would have done traditionally go in act as if it's a uh, white out you know and last one here all right so now I'm gonna actually go turn off the line work layer and just use the bucket tool to fill this in because it goes like a billion times faster oh <laughs> the lines open Oh, another lines oh goodness gracious all the lines are up <laughs> let's cut in there and uh, let's go over here cut in there and uh, yep yeah, we should be good I feel like I'm missing something here hmm. the, there's a line right there that Let's do that. And I think there's a little bit more inking that I gotta do still on the hair here. So this shape. There's some people that tilt their canvas a lot. And I mean, I do when I'm just on my own do my own thing but um, it's also like this but I don't do it all that often because I found that if I don't do it it kind of helps if I can accurately get all these lines without moving the canvas it just means my line control is getting better and better so I can learn how to do lines like that straight like pulling back and doing straight lines or going down this way doing straight lines those are some of the hardest strain lines for me to do, but eventually learned how to do them. Fill that in. And uh, I'm going to go in here with some... Some hatching of some sort. Oh. Oh, I did. Okay, I did. Some, okay. Um. Well, I'm gonna have to go and fill that back in. Maybe up here and like hatch inward a little bit. Maybe. Try to create a little bit more texture and depth to it. No, I'm not doing exactly like Horikoshi. Um, Cause then what's the point? I mean, <laughs> it's a redesign. I want to look exactly like Horikoshi's work. Then it's like I'm not even doing it. And there would be almost no point to art expression at that. Might do more, might do less. But, um, let's go back down to the inking layer. To a side to fix up that nostril. Don't know if I'm gonna keep that one either. I might change that. <laughs> Who knows? I think his eyebrows are black, right? I don't even have any reference of them up. Probably should have. Probably wouldn't have been a good idea. Let's 
wouldn't you say? And bazam, we're getting closer. So let's try to get some of his eye done. So basically his eyes are almost, they seem almost all black when you look at um, the manga. You're looking at black and white images because they're very dark green and there's not a whole lot of variance until the bottom of the eye. So I'm gonna keep this really thin rim around the pupil. I'm gonna go in here and hatch this out ever so slightly at the bottom. Do that. Maybe I could do a little line there. And uh, bam, got some eyes. I feel like oh, that feels a little weird. That part feels a little weird. I also feel like this part's sticking out a little bit too much. Yeah, yeah, definitely was sticking out a little bit too much there. I'm gonna pull this in also a little bit more. That looks a bit better. And uh, let's go ahead and do the texture on here. We are at 26 minutes. Holy cow, guys. See, this is why I'm not sure about real-time videos, because I don't know how many people <laughs> miss it through me blabbering and inking, but I guess we'll find out, right? Um, let me know who's made it this far in the comments section. And if you guys want to see more of this, because I can definitely do more real-time inks for sure. Um, zoom out, see how that looks. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Let's go up here. Try to give a couple bumps for insinuation up in of texture onto this. And uh Can't really focus here. Hmm. Let's see if that looks any good. Eh, it could be better. Might change that. Don't know. For now. It's okay for now. Um, but if you guys do like this and it does do well, I will do a part two. Um, let's start to ink this at least a little bit. Yeah, obviously I can't finish all of this in this one video or else it'll be like three hours. And sometimes inks can vary. Sometimes inks, um, depending on how well I'm doing that day too, inks can vary from hour and a half to three hours all the way up to even seven hours depending on the detail of the illustration, so. I 
Also, if I had just drawn this, I prob and went to ink it, I probably would have been able to ink it faster because all the design and lines would have been much more fresh in my mind. Keep on missing that line. And that's good. Pull that one out a little bit more. And it wasn't a sketch. So, so far, based on where we are, we have that much ink done on it. And, uh, yeah, not too far off. Not too far off when you look at the whole illustration. Um, I typically try to put a lot more effort into the face area, which I still got a few more things to do as I move along with it. And then the rest of the stuff, um, as you can see when I'm when I'm going into it, it's not as uh, it's more just tedious, quick work that I do, kind of fix things up here and there. Um, but other than that, it's just kind of following general shapes, stuff like that when you have a clean enough uh, pencil underneath like this. Unlike my really sketchy ones that I decide to ink from, you gotta think a lot harder <laughs> when I go to do those. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, it has these little wire things. I wonder if that's on the, oh, it is on the other side. Okay, so this is exactly what I mean. I don't remember the full design, even though I designed it. It's not all fresh in my mind right now. All right, pull that around. Yeah, that's pretty much all we're gonna be doing on this one. Um, if you guys do want to see more real-time inks like this, definitely let me know in the comment section. And uh, yeah, um, big shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much for your support and uh, special thanks to my tuning and Joni and tier patrons. You guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, if you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to this channel, like you see, please subscribe. Hit the bell icon and get notified when each video comes out. Like always, guys, hope you're having a great day. See you guys in the next video.